to order at 6.05 p.m. I'll do a roll call. Jay Booker's not here. Daniel Hoover or April Fry not here. Daniel Hoover not here, nor her Botox. She's here somewhere. Okay, okay Nora, I see you. Betty Krug, TJ Shell not here. Norma Krug is me, Michael Basil, and Jennifer Zenshaw. Great. Administration, we have Dr. Fasonic, Mr. Peronish. Absent. Not he here. Uh, Mr. Messina, I saw you. There he is. Here. Okay. And then we have our architect, engineer, I are here, and our solicitor, Attorney McElwee. All right, we're going to start this evening um, with item A on our agenda. Uh, well, actually, Dr. Fasonic had a couple comments to open with. Um, do you want to do that now? Sure. Is that a sure. good time? Thank you. And then we'll continue on with um, uh, access and the presentation. I just wanted to let the board members know, I've been talking to you throughout the day, that we did have, as many schools in Pennsylvania today, we had what was called a swatting incident. And what that is, is that someone from... California, they believe, was calling all of the 911 stations and saying that there was gunfire, there were shots being fired at different schools. So it started this morning, we heard that there was gunshots at Bishop Carroll. That was not true. Uh, but of course, we went into a lockdown just to be cautious, and we continued that throughout the day. And I just wanted to thank the teachers, the principals, the parents, everyone, uh, for their patience today. It was trying at times, but you know, we, uh, the kids were always safe with the caring adults that we have here at Northern Cambria, so I appreciate everything they did today. Okay, um, Hank, uh, would you like to begin with the geotechnical drilling, just any updates? And I, I, my question was, all the drilling that was approved, is it, has it been completed? So yes, all the drilling that was approved has been completed, and we have those results. And as you all know, those results show that the geotechnical engineer is suggesting or recommending that all any additions that were planned be put on deep foundations, which are considered caissons and grade beams going down to bedrock. The existing building, when it was built, was built on spread footings. But um, apparently when the, when the existing building was built, the, uh, the overdig, the, the amount of dirt that they used, that they dug up while doing this building, they kind of pushed around the building as typically is done, but it wasn't compacted properly. So there's, there's lots of loose fill around the, around the perimeter of the building. And if you build on, <coughs> excuse me, on that loose fill with shallow footings, which are traditional spread footings that are usually only below the frost line, what will happen is the addition will settle, the existing building won't settle, and you get what's called differential settlement, which causes cracks in your building and cause, causes uneven floors and those types of things from happening. And that, that's, the, that's the scenario for the addition at the classroom wing. Now, when the geotechnical investigation started, we were looking at an addition at the back gymnasium. There were additional issues back there. All the same issues I talked about at the front addition also occurred at that back gymnasium addition. But on top of that, they found a, a seam of coal and stuff that, that's called expansive material. Expansive material, a, a lot of you have probably heard of it as pyrite. So, but it doesn't just necessarily need to be pyrite. It's any material that when exposed to water and air, it expands. So the problem with that, which I'm sure in this area you've heard with other larger buildings, if you, if you build over this during the construction phase, you're exposing this material that's been underground for a long time to air, and then you put a concrete floor over top of it or a foundation over top of it, the, the air and the water have now hit this and it starts to expand and it's actually strong enough that it will lift the floor, put a, a, a big 
go in the middle of the floor or it will lift the foundation wall and, and cause cracking and that type of thing. So on top of the deep foundations over there, they're recommending at the back of the building that all of this expansive material be over excavated and removed and then backfilled with stone. So the bottom line, as you all know, is what this has done is it increased the estimates by about a million dollars because the estimates included spread footings because that's what the original building was on. But this is, after the geotechnical report, we are now into deep foundations. So in talking about that, before we even got those results, we had talked about options of possibilities of not putting that addition at that back gym. And we talked about if an addition is needed at a gym, maybe the front gym is the place to put that addition. So we, I have a design that we can go over for, for that with different options that I want to review with you tonight. But one of the things to consider is if we want to put an addition on that front space, we need to get additional geotechnical reporting done. We can assume that it's going to be deep foundations. And I think that's a safe, found, a safe assumption. But the geotechnical report will also estimate how deep those foundations have to go, how deep they have to drill the caissons to get to the bedrock. Without that information, the contractors can't give you an accurate bid because they won't know how deep they have to drill to install those caissons. So if we're looking to do an addition on that front gym, we would want to get additional work done for the geotechnical report. The estimated cost to do this additional work on the geotechnical report was a not to exceed $7,000 number. The original report, I believe you spent in the realm of $15,000 for, for, for two spots. So this is a little bit less than half added to do a third area for a geotechnical report. And maybe we should just jump to the, to that options for that gym addition if we were to do it. In the things I passed out to you would be the, the first 11 by 17 sheet. It's labeled A3. And if I get this up here onto this document scanner. This area is the, the front gymnasium. The, the parking lot is, is below this area where it says storage. So the parking lot is down here on this page. And the existing gym wall is approximately right about at that location. And as we've talked in the past, none of your gyms are quite high enough for the optimum recommended height for, of obstructions, but they're all within a couple inches of that. And we all decided that for a couple of inches, it's not worth removing the structure, raising the, the, the gym roof three to three inches to seven inches, I think, were the, was the range that we talked about. And spending all of that money to do that, and, and it doesn't stop you from being able to, to continue to have basketball games here. It doesn't stop you from, from having playoff games if you have the right seating capacity. None, th that's just a recommendation for, for ceiling height. It's not a requirement. So the original, we, after knowing all that, we looked at the floor plan and the original gym in this area is 75 feet from end line to end line. And with basketball at the high school level, they give you a range for, for how long the court can be. And as, as we all know, Anything under 74 feet is still allowed to be used, but you have to do what's called, you have to add two extra lines to designate where the offensive zone is. But your court is over 74. Your court is currently 75 feet. So you fall within the range of, of where you would need to be to just have the center line. So you wouldn't need to do anything. The optimum length for a, a high school basketball court is 84 feet across. So we, we looked at different options. If you wanted to entertain doing an 84 foot long basketball court, which is what the high school currently is, you could put an addition on the front of this building. You could rotate the basketball court from this orientation to this orientation. And then you get your 84 feet. 
you would remove the bleachers, remove this wall, install a beam, and put an addition on here for gymnasium space. That'll, then you would put bleachers on each side, and you could get bleachers to, for a capacity over 500, which it, at the last meeting we talked about being the cutoff line for being able to, to host playoff games if you wanted to. 80, your current high school is 84 feet long. That's, this addition would allow this to be that, that length as well. We'll, we'll, try, we'll try to hold the questions to the end if we can. If, and if and board that, members just jot them down and we'll get to them. Right, and then with that, we could either add an additional storage space or not add that storage space. So what we talked about at the last meeting was possibly designing this space as add alternates, where you do an add alternate that is that expands the, the gym to allow for the 84 foot court and storage. You do an add alternate to just do the 84 foot court, or you do an add alternate just to do the storage because storage was also concern, a concern during the interviews with the staff. And that's where we left that piece of it, and I'd like to open it up for questions there because ideally we, we have a little bit of a dialogue about that and we, we try to determine what direction we want to go. If we want to do any additions at all, the first step is approving, authorizing the geotechnical engineer for a not to exceed cost of $7,000 to do his additional work. Go ahead, Jennifer. Do we have the cost breakdowns of the three different options that you mentioned? Um, yes, if we go back to the front page, actually it's the second page in. The estimate on the front page includes, now that, now that we added a million dollars for the deep foundations, that estimate includes 1.5 million for the gym addition on the back of the building. When we're looking at this on the front of the building with the size and the, the, the way it, the addition would go, it was slightly more than that. So if you look at this, an add or deduct alternate for a front gymnasium to allow an 84 foot long court and storage with deep foundations is estimated at $1,775,000, of which 1.5 million is already in that number on the front page. So you, you'd be adding $275,000 to that front page number if you wanted to go that route. If you wanted to go the route for adding a gymnasium without the storage and deep foundations, that number is $1,075,000 of which $1.5 million is in that estimate. So you would reduce that estimate on the front page by approximately $325,000. Go ahead, Jen. Okay, so you, we, you're saying no storage then for the second option? The second option would be no storage. Okay, I just wanna make sure because it says storage without deep foundation, so we're gonna add no extra storage at all. Oh, you know what, I, 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 that's a, that was a typo issue. What, what, what okay. I meant to say was, with deep foundations without storage, without I'm sorry. Without storage, no, no, I just need to, I have to make note, thank you. Nope, that's an excellent okay. question, thank good you. catch. And that was the second one, Hank, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. That's the second alternate. So that's with deep foundations without storage? Yes. Okay. Hey. Yes. Go ahead. That, that million on the front was approximately, you know, we're talking about approximate numbers now, was approximately $700,000 for Fred Deep Foundations on the classroom edition and $300,000 for Deep Foundations and pyrite removal on the back gym. Okay. So when you take the, the approximately 800,000 that was originally looked at that, that edition back there, and add the 300 to it. 
that's where you get that number. Okay. So Hank, the first item that you have there, if the board would choose to go with that, that would be an additional 225 from the front number. Yes. If they choose to go the deep foundations with no storage, but the 84 long court, that would reduce the amount by 325,000. Yes. From the number that's the on, number the on the front. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. So if we would do nothing with it, it would bring the cost on the front page down 1.5 mil? Approximately, yes. So now that we know what the back gym's situation is after we did the geotechnical drilling, and that's pretty much not something we're going to move forward with. So if we don't flip the gym, the plan is just to keep the middle school gym the way it is and play and they're using it as our flagship gym, correct? Yes. And that gym currently only holds 300 and I've had 400 stuck in my head, but yes, it's something under 400. I apologize, I don't remember. 395, it, it, you're right, it's, it's just under 400. Okay, so th <coughs> it, let's, 395 is a estimate then for seating if we keep it the same. And this addition would bring it to 555? 555 that what I or thereabouts. 550, 575, depending on the final layout. Because there's some room in this document. Thing. There's some room if I if I do something with, with these doors, you can add some bleachers here and it might get it up to even as much as 600. Can anybody tell me at the last meeting we spoke about playoffs? And somebody said to have a playoff game, at first round playoffs at your school, you had to have seating of 500. Um, I've been told that playoff games were held at Harmony this year and they have nowhere near 500. Okay. And it, it also, it's a, it's a sliding scale depending on what division you're in. Single A, quad A, whatever division you're in. There's a different amount of minimum capacity. Okay, my comment is, Hank, that we're looking at seating, and what I had written down for seating was about 380 to 400. So, we it would cost us 1.5 million more dollars for 200 more seats in our gym. Um. No, there's a lot more going on than just that. Your 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 gym. But gets, I, I understand that. Your gym but gets larger and it gets to 84 feet, and it allows for two teaching spaces in that gym now that it's now that it's larger during the day with the bleachers pulled back. So there's there's more benefits than just seating. Okay. Are you also aware that we brought that up for a vote and the motion failed? I am not. Okay, so we voted no not to drill there. Um, the vote failed for the drilling, not right, for what to for do the with drilling. The gym. But you can't proceed without drilling. You shouldn't proceed without drilling. Right. Okay, well, if, if that's the case, then th that, that's why we're talking about it tonight, so that, so that the board can give your design team some type of direction on, on what to do with, with this front gymnasium and whether that's so the, the the options are leave it just like it is and do nothing put an addition on for large enough to make an 84 foot court and storage put an addition on just large enough for an 84 foot court or put an addition on just large enough for storage those are the four options is that also something that can be done at a later date you mean after this project is completed? Yes. Yes, it can, it can be done anytime. And the geotechnical information would be valid anytime in the future as well. You could, you could do the drilling now and, and not put the gymnasium addition on and that information would be valid if you decided to do that court 20 years from now. The, the subsurface investigation done now would still be valid because it's not changing. But we already voted on that and it was voted down. Okay. Yeah, that was voted down. I think our concern is 
more focus on getting the students into this building at this point um, for classroom purposes, academics. Um, that seems to be where our last discussion went. April? I, I mean, I just need to go on record and say I completely disagree with this. If we're doing this project, I feel awful. We're going to keep that middle school being where our kids are <laughs> Are going to be playing at as our main gym because it, it honestly it sounds like we're going down to two gyms where I mean I don't know that we can afford to make the cafeteria multi-purpose room that back gym is pretty much going to be set the way it is because where it is I, I am I mean I just needed people to know that when your kids come into that middle school gym and that's where they're gonna be playing all their home basketball and volleyball games from now on this is what happened because people would not vote for seven thousand dollars to drill to even see if that's a possibility for us to expand on that and that's it. You got. I mean, if that's the most, if that's the majority of the board, then that's the majority of the board. But I just need to go on record saying I absolutely, 100% positively disagree with that. We're already talking about how terrible our facilities are as it is. It'll be one more additional thing that we're going to need to think about moving forward. Um, and if there's one thing that I, I forgot to mention, or I'm not sure I was clear on it, and I know I didn't mention it the last time we talked. With this addition, if you look at this drawing, when you have your full gym here, basketball court here with the bleachers open, that's the way it would be for, for home games, let's call them home varsity games. But in the evenings for practices or for rec league or for things like that, if you look at this drawing, once you put this addition on this gym and you pull these bleachers in so that they fold into the walls, you have room for a basketball court here and a basketball court here. So this gym now has two courts that can be used for practice or for rec league games instead of one. Once this, if you were to decide to do that addition. And I would just like to say, I, I don't have a vote in this, but in coming into this district and dealing with um, all of this, the building project, one of the discussions we've had is about that back gym not being created full capacity at the time it was built. And now we're paying for that. We're looking at, uh, you know, if that had been done as a flagship gym, then again, we may not be even having this discussion. So, um, you know, again, I don't have a vote, but just saying that if we're going to, let's do this once, let's be done with it and have everything that we need. Okay. I, I, I got one more. Nora comment. has a question. Oh, and then who? If you you want to oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Hey, you talk about having two classroom spaces. Are you talking that the gym, like you could have two gym classes happening in there? And would there be any type of partition that's available that goes through there? Yes. Um, so traditionally, it used to be folding walls. Like you have one here in this building. Yes. And. More recently, the, the, the folding walls have been found that they're not used as much as a drop-down curtain. So in, in more recent times, we've been including drop-down curtains on, on gymnasiums. So it drops down from the ceiling. It's, it's, easy to, it's as easy to open and close as it is to lift and lower a basketball hoop. And it allows you to, to have a gym class over here and a gym class over here with a curtain in between. It would also allow two practices to happen at the same time with a curtain in between. But if the district decided that a wall would be what they would prefer, you, they're still available and you could still do a folding wall to divide that gym into two pieces. And the drop-down curtain would be included in these specs? The drop-down curtain would be included in these specs. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mike was next with a question, then I see Don Messina, um, our maintenance manager also. Just real quick, Hank, and again, the current estimate you have on this front page, there's nothing in there to do the cafeteria, Jim, currently, correct? There's That, that goes on a little bit further down in this, but there, there's some money in there, but very little. There very was money in there because originally we talked about removing those windows and, and raising them higher for safety reasons. And that was, I've got that number in there somewhere, $155,000. That's still in there. When you when you convert this, this cafeteria to a multi-purpose room, that's something that would absolutely have to happen or you'd be breaking windows. So okay. that 155 is still in out of those numbers. So an additional 350 for the 
uh, of, on of top the, of that. Of the 350, 155 is in there, or rather the 150. So, so there's an additional 200,000 for that very last option, an additional 125,000 or 175,000 for the top addition. I'm sorry, that's a different one altogether. There, uh, we, we, at the last meeting, the board decided not to raise the, not to spend the extra money to raise yeah, we, the, the roof in there. Correct. So that's why there's a line through the one that was $1 million. And so what's left on the table was converting that to a multi-purpose room, but doing it as add or deduct alternates so that you could see the prices and determine once the contractors bid on it, whether to award it or not. Okay. So the, again, the 155 is already in it, you're saying more or less? In the number, yes. So be, okay. Okay, so the difference then, we would just pay the difference on this, and that would give us that practice basketball area we'd need. For, for very young students, because okay. it's not high enough to do for anybody from fourth grade on. Okay, John, you had a question? Mr. Messina? Okay, he's, what he's saying, I don't know if you can hear him, is that we currently have a curtain in our gym now, as it is. Yes, and you, you probably use it on a pretty, pretty regular basis for that classroom, if you don't, but that curtain runs this direction, down the center. It's not long enough, we can't just take it and relocate it because the new curtain has to run this, this length. So, it, it's, a, it, it's a lot longer, so. Okay, but you're saying, but you're saying that would be for games or for practices only? Everything. Games and practices, you would use that curtain. Or you could, depending on the, the way you're running your practice, you don't even use the practice, the curtain for practice. If you, if you leave the whole thing open and one coach okay. is running two different scrimmages, he can stand in the middle and, and run scrimmages from each side. It, it, it allows for some flexibility. But again, it only allows for flexibility if that's what you need and that's what you as a board decide to do. If you, if you decide you don't need it or decide not to do it, then we, it, it's, it's moot. It's completely up to you. We just, we're just looking for some direction on how to proceed. And if you think it's something you're interested in, then I guess since there was already a vote to not do, to not award the geotechnical additional geotechnical investigation, you would have to bring it to the board for another vote to see if you wanted to do that. And again, that's that's all up to you, whatever whatever you decide. Okay, but this still doesn't have um, any bearing on whether or not we can still bring our students, our high school students, down here because currently they will fit and we do have gyms to accommodate them. Correct. I'm more interested in being able to fit the students in the building with the consolidation, um, again, for the academic purposes, for the classroom purposes. Any other questions, April? Yeah, and I'm more interested in learning about how we're gonna fit everything together because this is definitely one piece of it. So. I understand that we have to talk about academics, but this, to say that this part doesn't matter is, I mean, kind of insulting to all the kids and the teachers that use this space. Okay, we have to look at the cost factor, and that's still an increase of $1.5 million in order to do that to a gym. Okay, Hank, um, okay. do you have more information for us yes. tonight? So, um, as we continue down through my, my first page here, um, we've talked about the geotechnical report, we've talked about additional cores, and for now, the board has decided not to do the additional cores, right? Yeah, that's correct. April. How much, so is, a, how much is a brand new gym? I, I would have to know the, the square footage, which I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe just next time, yeah, or an email. I can do that. Thanks. Let me make a note on that. I believe, I believe sometime in the past I, I had answered that. I'll just dig it back up again, because a long time ago, maybe about a I year ago when we were looking at it. Yeah. Was it three? 
So two point nine three million dollars is what he's saying. That 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 sounds reasonable. Yes, I I can't remember what that number was, but I do remember looking at it about a year ago, and I can dig it up for you. So we we've talked about item three now, three two, and it was the size of the additional gym. And for now, since item two was voted not to do the cores. Item three is, is pretty much moot. We're not, we, we, right now the, the design team works on this project without this, this gym, not even as, as ad alternates so that the contractors can tell you what it's actually going to, to cost. I, April, I just ahead. need to mention that we did ask yeah. all of our teachers <coughs> and our athletes and our coaches, what I understand we asked for wish lists, but we also asked what yeah. they need. I, I can guarantee you, none of them are gonna say this is close to what they needed. None of them, and that's teachers included. I, I mean, I'm sorry for the teachers are here. I don't think any of our phys ed teachers are here with us today, but I am terribly sorry that this is the way it's turning out for you. Go ahead. Anybody has a comment? I thought. I thought when asked, Mr. Pajak said we could operate with only two gyms. I'm not talking about the number of gyms. I'm talking about the space of the gym. And, and that, that was accurate. Your, your athletic director said he could operate the the day-to-day -day functions of the school and the extracurricular activities for the school with with two gyms. I think that the concern that came up with that third gym that everybody talked about at the high school and everything else was once you brought in community use and, and rec league use, it, it became congested. Mm -hmm. oh, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he said he could, he could do school during the day, he could do varsity and JV, but when it came down to elementary, middle school, that's where the problem began, correct? Yeah. And that's when we looked at the cafeteria being an option for the elementary level for practices, et cetera. But I think the problem was with the elementary, you'd have to put basketball hoops in a multi-purpose room, which would require us to raise the roof, which we voted not to do. Yeah. And, and believe me, I understand Mr. Pajak did say he could handle both all of the school-based activities through us. Once again, anybody who has their kids who have participated in elementary basketball or have future plans to do so, or grandchildren, that will no longer be happening at Northern Cambria. We have no rec facilities for the kids in this school, in this district. We have nowhere for them to go. I mean, my kids go up to the rec and play up at Nicktown, but that's just in the evenings. There won't be anywhere for them to run their league that we have been involved with for the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. That, that piece is completely gone. So that's one more thing we're taking away from the kids of this district. Okay, we have not yet done anything with the high school gym. We still own that. You're right, and so for three years we have, we have the opportunity to keep things the way they are, 100%. Jennifer, did you have a question? I just wanted to make a comment that athletics is so important to them growing as individuals it, it brings camaraderie it teaches them teamwork these are things in skills that they'll learn outside of the classroom it's also important that we have the space for the community because you are our community what if you want to have your baton group come and do their gym show you know we won't have a facility because we're going to have only our students able to use it and I I really doesn't sit good with me if we have to check and make sure they are eligible to have playoffs at our gym. We cannot tell them, I'm sorry guys and girls, you made the playoffs, but you cannot have a home game. I, I just, it doesn't sit right with me. And I think if they do, then the people who voted no should be the ones to go and tell them this. Because it won't be me, and it shouldn't be.
Dr. Fasana does the, do the um, two gyms, are, are they adequate for the scheduling of students and gym classes? They are adequate for what we have here. They are not adequate if we're looking at things for the community. No, and I'm talking if any the day of our day programs. Scheduling, please. Day to day scheduling, yes, they are adequate. And that would be grades K through 12? That would be grades K, K through 12, but we would also include the pool as part of that as well. So we may have some kids swimming, we may have kids in the gyms, and of course having the cafeteria be a, a gymnasium area, that would also be a good location for the elementary students. Okay, and you did mention, or Hank mentioned, we could have basketball hoops in there, but they would be low hoops for small children, correct? Correct. Okay. To remind you of the history of, of that, the, your, your rec league, your current community league, does not use lower hoops than 10 feet. Correct. They use, a, they use a 10 foot hoop for every age group. There are rec leagues in the country that use lower hoops and they raise them as the children get older. But um, your rec league does not. So you can have, it's a multi-purpose room that would allow the younger students to okay. use this space for phys ed space, but it, it really does not function as a practice space for the, for the community in the evenings because if you're playing on 10-foot hoops, you don't want to practice on an 8-foot hoop. Okay, thank you. So um, moving on, we, we've talked about items one, two, three, and we, we, we've touched on four, and just to, four is on here just to reiterate. This is the, the multi-purpose room we're talking about. What the board has chosen to do is to convert the cafeteria to a multi-purpose room as part of this project, but make them add alternates. So if the costs are prohibitive, you do not have to award that work. If the, if the costs are within budget, you can award that work. And so that, that's my understanding of the last direction that the board gave your design team for, for that space. Is, is, that, is that accurate? That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Then the, the other line item on this on the agenda was we talked about construction managers versus clerk of the works. And we've talked about this on and off throughout the project. And the, the, co the discussion always was when is the right time to do that and to talk about it at that time. And at the last meeting we talked about now is the time to consider whether we go with a clerk of the works or a construction manager. And we talked about the differences between clerks of the works and construction managers and the differences in costs for that. Perfect, because th that was my understanding, and that's what this says here. That, 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 that was my understanding, I just wanted to, to verify. The board has authorized the receipt of proposals for both clerk of the works and construction managers, and then we'll determine which direction to go after the interview process. Um, so if we go back to the agenda, we've covered geotechnical, we've covered the clerk of the works. Um, the next thing on the agenda would be all students and staff into the existing building. This has been a, a conversation that has come up several times and um, the, the, the discussion about it has been, the main question is, as I understand it is, has been couched that this building was originally designed for 1,500 students. How, why do we need additions to move the high school down to here. And um, I guess I, I just had one or two questions off the, the, the top for that. We, 
the information of the building's been designed for 1,500 students originally. Do we know where that came from? Is there, is there something that says that the building was designed for 1,500? Or was it possible that maybe at one point there were 1,500 students in this building? Just out of curiosity, do we know where that 1,500 number came from? I, I can tell you that class size used to be around 150 students. So I, I think the 1,500 or I thought it was more like 1,200 at the house, but between 12 and 1,500, I think it was act based on students in the class. Okay. Yeah. And um, it, it's funny you, you mentioned that because when I, when I looked at it after I was asked to because of the 1,500 student thing, when I did just completely rough calculations for what it was like in the 60s when they were building this, I was coming up with a maximum of maybe 1,200 students for that time period. And that sounds like maybe that's, that's what was in this building, which makes sense. I just wasn't sure where, if, 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 when I was doing the math, if it was 1,500 students, you were having some pretty large class sizes. Some, um, some classes, some, some rooms were approaching 40 students in a classroom, which is even large for back then. I can also add some information. So I looked at uh, schedules for the high school for the middle school and the elementary, and I looked at how many classes we were offering, uh, period one, period two, three, four, and so on. And at the high school, the number of rooms utilized, now this does not include administration, this does not include the nurse, guidance, library, or any support services. The number of rooms at the high school that we use at any one time range from 17 at the lowest to 23. So 23 at any one time, we are providing 23 classes for our current students. At the middle school, our highest number is 21. And at the elementary, we are using 26 rooms. And again, that does not include administration, nurse, guidance, library. At the elementary, I did include support services. I did not include those at the middle school or the high school. So we need a total, from my rough calculation, 70 rooms. We do not have 70 rooms in our current building. So in, if, if that's the direction that the board wishes to go, we will have to cut curriculum there will be classes that we will not be able to offer and we will offer the students less. As the superintendent, I cannot recommend that. I want to offer the students more, not less. And I think Hank, you also did some calculations yeah, on this I, as well. I, I, took the, uh, I came at it from a different direction. What I did was I, I took the original floor plan of the, of the building without any additions and, I, and without changing the spaces, I, I named all the spaces. These are the last two pages in your handout. I'm on the second to the last page right now. And so what I did was I, I took those spaces and I just named them. It, and I, I took the, the spaces that we have in the new plan and tried to find places for them around the building. So as you can see, the gyms stay the gyms, the pool stays the pool, locker rooms stay locker rooms. Kindergarten stays over where it was. We, we come over into the main part and we have first grade and I named the first grade classrooms and the second grade classrooms and the third grade classrooms and I, I sprinkled in special ed and life skills and music rooms and, and those types of things where I could. The K-8 administration stays where it was. The K-8 nurse stays where it is. We have guidance, we have some guidance. I let the band, the middle school band room stay where it was and assumed it would be the middle school, high school band room in that area. But what that did was, if you remember now, this is the main entrance, we were using that space as, as high school administration. So that puts the high school administration into two classrooms on an interior space, which goes back to the same issues you have at your current high school where you have security issues where public and visitors come into the building before they get to the high school versus coming into a captured vestibule. But um, things that could work out, but for, for this study that I did, I, I just was labeling spaces. And I went through and I labeled every space that was existing. 
on both floors, first floor and the second floor. And then what I did, I checked them off on our plans as I went through, and then I made a list over here on the right side of the page of spaces that when I was finished putting a name in every space, spaces that didn't have a home. And those spaces included a fitness center, a chorus room, two eighth grade classrooms, two ISS rooms, a chemistry lab, two chemistry classrooms, a physics room, two biology classrooms, a robotics lab, a secondary life skills room, the metal shop, which should say metal shop slash steam because we were looking at, at updating some of those facilities. That, so that's what this steam room is below it. Should, there, that's one space, basically. Uh, an additional special ed classroom, two foreign language rooms, two BCIT rooms, a TV studio, a reading support space, two social studies rooms, four math rooms, and 10 smaller spaces that were labeled independent study that, that was allowing some of the students to have some space that they don't currently have in either one of the buildings for, for the way curriculum is, is moving these days. So Hank, if we um, use this space, let's say for classrooms, the auditorium, or even the pool, how many could we fit in? So out of that, out of that thing, there, there's, there's roughly 36 to 40 spaces that are missing. Some are bigger than classrooms, some are smaller than classrooms. So if we take a classroom as the average size for what those spaces would be, if you, if you look at the drawings, in theory, you could get four classrooms out of the pool area. If you completely eliminate the auditorium, you could get another four to six, say six classrooms out of this auditorium space. Um, so that's six and four is 10. So 10 of those 35 spaces could, could find a home that way. Okay, now my question is with the declining enrollment, we are going to have fewer students, fewer classrooms will be needed to accommodate those students as our enrollment is dropping, which already has been proven in the numbers of the state. So looking at this, um, we're still looking at all the existing classrooms possible, but by the, the, even the end of the three years, even up to five years, for example, first grade, we have four classrooms there, we're only going to need three. And kindergarten as well, um, I think on the new drawing, you only had three classrooms available. We're, we have four here. So there's two extra rooms I found just by looking at this page. Right, so I looked at that too, and I, and, and I made, I made some, some big assumptions. I, say your enrollment drops down to levels below what they are now, and in K through eight, which is nine levels, you can eliminate one classroom in each one of those grades. So now you, you've gained another nine. So if you, give, if you get rid of the pool and you get rid of the auditorium, you've gained 10. If you get rid of the, if you get rid of the, if you put 30 kids in a classroom now and hope that the enrollment drops so that you can lose a grade, a classroom in each grade level, you gained another nine. So you're at 19 of the, of the 39 spaces. So you're, you're still 20 spaces shy. But you're talking 20 spaces shy, are you considering the high school there? Because once again, um, as I stated last meeting, um, one of the courses, and I'll give you one example, physics for example, was not offered every year. It was offered every other year. In between that year, it was offered online and that student could take that at a computer anywhere where there was a computer. So we have classrooms um, that can be very easily multi-purposed to accommodate other classes as well. Um, the physics classroom is already being multi-purposed. The teacher in there is teaching other courses. So it's not just used for one class and not used the rest of the day. So you know, we're looking at this, we're looking at numbers of teachers as well. So they're, they're, the physics teacher is teaching math, is also teaching other sciences. So it's not just something that's used once and not used again during the day. 
Okay, I had asked for a schedule, you to have a schedule for me at this meeting. Do you have that, please? I do have a schedule, uh, not here, but I do have schedules that I will be happy to share with you if you wanna come in or if anyone wants to come in, we can go over teacher schedule. Okay, could I have that sent to me? Because I want to know the schedule and the number of students in those classes. We can discuss, definitely. I'm curriculum chair also, so I'd be very interested in that information. Sure. I'll have it available in my office. And that would better determine the use of the classrooms because I know um, part of the reason when we decided to consolidate was that so many of the rooms at the high school were left empty and weren't being used. So if that's the case, um, we need to consider that when we're consolidating. We can multipurpose many of the rooms, I think a little uh, better than what we are doing right now to accommodate those students without lacking anything in curriculum. Well, and that's why I counted the number of classrooms we're using. So like I said, there were 23 at one point in time. So that's the current classes and curriculum that we have. So we use 23 <coughs> classrooms at one, one period. April, you had a question? She's clearly stated with us how many classrooms are being used at the high school and that we're gonna use that room for more than one thing. I don't know how much more we can discuss this that we're utilizing the little, the very little space that we've now squeezed into is to do everything possible for our high school kids. I also have to make a note because we're talking about the pool. We just started our public swim program for the community because once again, it's one of the only very few things that we have going on in the community here. And that post from our school district Facebook page was two days ago. It had 82 shares. And people commenting from other districts, can other people from districts come and use your pool? I will absolutely not vote to get rid of that pool either. Okay. If, if I could um, add a, a little bit about the pool. We talked about this in the past too, and it's, it's not a very cost-effective way to add space to your building by filling in a pool. Filling in a pool and converting a pool space to classroom space is a, is a pretty expensive undertaking. So um, it's not like you're saving all that square footage from not building the addition because you're spending 80% of that addition in the cost to convert a pool space to classroom space. So, you, so there, there is some savings in doing that, but it's not, it's not like we can reduce the addition by four classrooms and then you're going to save all that money that went to square footage because you're going to spend a lot more money converting that pool space. Ms. Jennifer? I just wanted to comment on the physics. Um, I was in school here 30 plus years ago. I had physics in my same math class. My math teacher was my physics teacher. We didn't have a special physics room, but it was a requirement for me to get into college that I took physics. I need, needed those skills to build on. So I, I, and most students still need physics just to do a job. And I, I just, I'm not comfortable with just writing it off and saying every other year, and I'm not comfortable with it being an online course when we have wonderful teachers here that teach it now, and I don't want it to be an option that we change that. Well, thank you, absolutely, but um, our students are at the disadvantage. We do not have enough students registering for it for it to be offered every year. So I don't understand why we need to designate that room at that per point in time for physics when it's not even being taught here every year. Yes, it definitely is a disadvantage. Go ahead. The one thing I am absolutely unwilling to compromise on is our children's education. I went to school in the 70s. It's a whole different ball game now. You know, back then special ed was in one classroom. You had everybody doing the same thing. You had a math, you had an English, you had social studies. That was it you didn't have the opportunities that we are providing to our students now. The opportunities that they can't get at some other schools and then they have to come here for reading specialists because they don't have it at another school. At a private school might not have a reading specialist or a Title I or an English as a second language or STEAM or um, the various, you know, we, we teach programming now, actual programming and drones 
and things that our kids are gonna be able to go and have very successful lives. And I'm not willing to compromise that and shut people in their dorms because they are building as much as we can. Our, our, our teachers. Our teachers and our students and our administration have worked so hard in the past few years to develop our school into something that is incredible, something that makes us proud on a daily basis. And we can't sacrifice that. If we can make adjustments to accommodate everything we're doing now, okay, I can do that. But I'm not willing to X out some of the wonderful developments that we've made in our curriculum. That is, um, that, that's the way I approach this. So that's the study that I came up with. Um, I'm sure it has some flaws in it, but it, I think it gives, my, my goal was to try to give you a visual of, of what fits in the existing space and what doesn't fit in the existing space that is currently included in this new renovation. And then let it be open for discussion, which seems like that's what's happening. And could I at least just ask of you to, to reevaluate after looking at a schedule and the number of students and taking that into consideration and then revisiting um, the number of classrooms that are in front of us? Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to do anything you ask me to do, any of you ask me to do. Okay. I'd be willing to meet with you if I need to. Okay. <coughs> just because we have a few kids in a class doesn't mean we shouldn't provide that class. I mean, I remember people sitting at these tables that have had kids going through the school that their kids were in the college and high school classes or the AP classes, and they were so strongly opinionated that we needed to do more of these classes and more of these specialized programming so that their kids would be prepared for college and going forward. And now to say, well, you know, you have a Spanish four class and there's only 10 kids in it. Let's just mix it. Or we only have, you know, three kids in an AP biology class. Just wipe it off. No, we can't do that. It's not fair to the kids. And just looking at it from a college perspective, there are so many way, ways for kids to get ahead in college because everybody's looking at cost effectiveness, how many years are they gonna have to be there? What's the outcome gonna look like? So you have a kid in Northern Cambria, say they take four years of Spanish, they can go and clep out of that language at most universities. That's, they can earn anywhere between, and once again, I'm talking from St. Francis perspective, six to 12 credits they can earn by paying $100 to clep out of, an, out of a course. They, it covers four years of Spanish though. You have AP classes. It allows them to get ahead and try to maybe finish at least a semester early. Kids are really looking to get the biggest bang for their buck of how many college credits are being accepted into the schools they want to go to, how many AP scores are being accepted where I want to go. We are looking at all of these things. I'm seeing some kids come in with 64 credits. Not that that's something I would always recommend for every student, but there, there are some students that are able to pick up double, double majors, picking up a minor. They're able to graduate a semester to a year behind. So yeah, we might only have a handful of kids in Spanish four, or maybe a handful of kids in AP chemistry, but, and let me tell you, I see the AP scores coming from our kids here, and they are remarkable. We have kids getting AP scores on their chemistry, four and fives, which is kind of very difficult to do. They're earning eight credits of general chem one and two. Like, we are doing remarkable things, so I am definitely not going to, once again, vote for anything that's gonna decrease our curriculum. So I'm keeping the pool, I want a new gym now, and I'm not doing anything to decrease our space. Okay, and I agree too, we're not looking to cut any curriculum, but my only focus here is that we have established full-size classrooms on, the, on these plans 
set aside for specialty classes. And even as you're saying, it might be one or two kids or two to four kids. They don't need a full classroom size to do that during that time period. We need to use our space a little more wisely than that. Um, Dunn, did you have a question? Okay. Mike. I had a quick question. Uh, what was the discussion about the auditorium for uh, yeah. classrooms? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, that was, that's something that It was just that asked is, is looking for additional space for classrooms. The auditorium is a big space. If you wanted to give up your auditorium, you could fit classrooms in okay, there. Which yeah. we, okay, which we know we can't do that. But I, and again, I, I, I agree with April. Like we, I would never vote to get rid of the pool. We've already kind of discussed that topic. But I think, again, going back to just Laura's comments on the number of classrooms at the high school that are being utilized at one point, 23 classrooms, again, Yes, you, you may be able to consolidate a, a, a couple rooms years down the road. I'll concede that, that yes, you might gain a few rooms. We did a pretty thorough walk through the school and there was three classrooms, two or three I think it was, that currently weren't being used. So you're not talking about gaining a ton of space to uh, shove kids in rooms. And, and a lot of the rooms had plenty of students in them. They're not like they're empty and you could double the room size. I think the average is around 15 or 16 in the country. So we're not talking about the point where we're getting uh, 10 or 12 here, we still have average size classrooms here, if not bigger than average for a lot of the classrooms. Yes, there's some small ones. But again, we're already spending 13 or so million on bringing this school up to par, putting the roof on or the HVAC. So the addition's 10 million. So to renovate existing space, renovations are much more expensive than building new square footage typically, I think, if I'm saying that correctly. So you're gonna spend millions to try to renovate, to squeeze kids into the existing school school so now all of a sudden maybe you're going to spend 16 million or 17 versus 23 but now you've given up 38,000 square feet for another six million so it's it's not like you're like Hank said you're not getting dollar for dollar savings by just squeezing the kids in here so I can there's no way I would ever vote to not put addition on a school do I think you could maybe shrink it a little bit possibly but there's absolutely no way you're going walk around a the school there's not a lot of space available it's not like we have tons of space yes 10 years down the road it may change, but you, you still got to plan for what we are today and not completely just assume you're going to squish everybody in here because 10 years down the road, we may be at that number. So again, I, I just want to throw the comment out that you're not saving dollar for dollar just by simply cutting that uh, $10 million addition off and squeeze them in here. You're going to lose a lot of that through uh, renovations. I would be happy if any board members would like a tour while school is in session, I'll be happy to do that for you. Uh, we can set aside some times and you can visit the classrooms and see how many students are in them, what rooms may, may or may not be used and so forth. So if you would like that, I will be more than happy to set that up for everyone. As we, as we talk through this, another, so that you have all the information available as you're making your decisions, one of the things to consider is, is um, the economy of, of how an addition is designed and built and and what makes sense in in how a, how an addition is laid out and what makes sense in how much of an addition you can take off to save money versus versus that type of thing like for instance if you look at this this is the classroom addition down here on this page double double loaded that's um this it's it's r1 it's the Second, second large drawing, second large page on your set. So um, double loaded corridors are more economic than single loaded corridors. Uh, the, a double loaded corridor has, as you go down the corridor, it's got rooms on each side. So your space, your teaching space as a relation to your communication space, which is your corridor, is best utilized when you're in a double loaded corridor. That's the way this is designed. This, this space is also designed with these, with these classrooms with the narrower side parallel with the corridor. So you're not, if, they, if this addition had all of the classrooms perpendicular to that and you could cut out a couple classrooms, maybe you could turn them to parallel and save some money. But we are already running parallel to the, class, to the corridors here. So we, we are already, with this, with this design, we are as economical as we can be. And another thing to think of, a two-story addition is more economical per square foot than a single-story addition. But if you wanted to save 
the only way to really get a bang for your buck and save money in this edition is to make it a one-story edition. And we've looked at that countless times in the past. And we could not get the curriculum, your current curriculum, to work with a single-story classroom edition of this size. It, everything just did not fit. So if we wanted to reduce this, you're talking about the most economical way to reduce it is to reduce it by an, an entire floor level. And to do that, the board and the administration is going to have to tell us what curriculum items are being cut to make that happen. I'd like to go back and address the curriculum. Um, my daughters took advantage of every opportunity they had for extra credits, college credits. They both went into colleges with a lot of credits that they got at the school. I don't think anybody, hopefully on this board, is saying cut out where you can get college credits and get all that extra. I think they're just saying we need to look at rooms compared to what we're going to do. If we don't have the students that are sign up, it's not like we're saying, sorry, we can't, we can't do this for you every year. We don't have the kids signing up for physics every year. We're only offering every other year. We either have to figure out how to get the kids all to sign, more kids to sign up for physics, or we need to figure out where to fit the kids that do sign up or the alternative, what we have been doing, you guys don't, don't want to look at it that like we've already been doing this every other year. We're having these kids do it online. It's not the best solution, but it is the solution. Nobody here, I don't think, especially Norma, she's curriculum, is saying let's get rid of stuff. We're just trying to figure out how to do it more eco economically. And I will clarify too, I'm only using physics as one example. There are other courses out there um, that are affected as well because as you get to the higher level classes, maybe it's an AP Chemistry, maybe it's a Spanish 4, whatever those courses are, they don't always run every year. So a lot of times, and it's just maybe a couple of students, it, it, it's all set with our student demands. And a lot of times we just don't have the students who, again, are signed up for those courses to take. And I just chose physics as an example because it was a personal experience for me. Um, uh, the students don't always get what they need, but also we're sh giving them classrooms of, we're allowing a classroom space of about 24 to 30 student space for these things to happen when I don't know that that's necessary. But I would like to clarify that in those classrooms, there's not only physics happening, and that teacher is not just teaching two kids for physics. There's other classes, the same with chemistry or AP chemistry. So while yes, we may have to limit and offer certain classes every other year, that doesn't take that person out of that classroom for the entire day. Because our teachers are teaching many classes. We don't have just one person teaching AP chem. We don't have one person teaching physics because we are a small school. They teach many different classes. So my chemistry teacher is teaching Chem 1, Chem 2, Advanced Chem, AP Chem. They're teaching four different classes. And so it's, it's not, uh, on paper, it may seem, yes, we don't need that room because we're not doing AP Chem, but the other classes are running in that room as well. Right. I was going to try and, and try to explain that a little bit to her. Laura probably did a better job than I would. But um, I, was, I was going to say that I was not asked to design by the administration a foreign language for a Spanish four classroom or, a, or an AP chemistry room. I, we were told how many chemistry rooms were needed. And it, it, there's there's basically, each, each one of these spaces, there's one chem lab, and that's AP chemistry is being taught in that chem lab, but so is chem one, and so is chem two, and, and er everything else. So just like the foreign language, it, it, it's, there's two foreign language classrooms. That doesn't mean that one foreign language classroom is designated to be Spanish four. 
it's teaching other things during the day. There's just maybe when you get to Spanish four, there's there's only several kids in that room, but when you're in Spanish one, the room is completely full. Okay, and that's why I said it would help me tremendously if I can get that schedule and number of students that are running in that schedule um, currently and also for next year. Um, it would help us to see where our students are headed and what classrooms they, act, they do need and what is being used um, daily and, and, and what classrooms are full to the max or what, what classrooms maybe we only have two or three students for. Uh, that's why I'm interested in seeing that schedule, mm -hmm. please, with the numbers of students um, and the classes through the, through the typical day, through the typical year, to see where we compare with the buildings on, with the rooms of the building on paper. And I kind of agree because now I'm terribly confused. So you're yeah. saying, you're saying that we use, we use the, the and we're, I'm just going to say physics room to, for lack of a better term. We're going to use the physics room for physics one year, but not the other year. So who is in that room? Who is in that room on the off year? And then where do they go on the year that we have physics? So we asked them to design not based on classes, but based on teachers. So we have a teacher that teaches physics, physical science, and math. So in that classroom is that teacher and math classes are going on in that classroom, physics if we're offering them, and next year we're looking at physical science as well. So there is someone in that room all day long. Whether or not physics will be offered that year will be based on what we can schedule. But there is someone in that room. Uh, same with the chem room. Even if we don't have AP Chem, we have a teacher in that room teaching Chem 1, Chem 2, uh, pre-chem, advanced chem, whatever we have. So we still need, we still have a person in that room, we still have a body in that room that's teaching different classes, although they may not be teaching physics. So that room is not empty. There is a person in that room teaching. It might be the physics room, but they might be teaching math in there, or they might be teaching physical science. So they might have a math class that has 20 kids in it. Correct. Correct, correct. We're a small school, so my teachers, um, they teach many, what we call preps, many different subjects. Okay, but I, I'm pretty sure I saw in this earlier plan, and I'm not being able to read it here very clearly, but I'm pretty sure that I saw that there were, for example, four math rooms designated. So then by what you're saying, we could possibly reduce that to three math rooms because now the physics room is being used to teach math as well. That's why I think I need to look at the schedule and see how this is how um, the rooms, the classrooms are being used. Because I don't think if we have four math rooms um, on this floor plan, I don't know that um, we need all four math rooms, especially if the physics room is going to double as a math classroom it's as well. possible it's possible so I think in there. each of those subject areas we could eliminate one of those rooms possibly not for every subject area if I look here there's three English three social studies there are four math um, but for the other subjects I don't see we and we had talked previously even about the elementary uh, school this school classrooms I never want to go below three classes I think with the little kids uh, they're not getting that best education if we go down to two classes of kindergarten if we only have 50 kids and we put 25 kids in a room that's too difficult so my recommendation would always be to have at least three sections kindergarten first second third and fourth currently we have four and we pay for it with title money and then at the middle school, um, once we get into certifications, fifth and sixth grade might be easier to go down to three sections, but once we get to seventh and eighth grade and we're dealing with teacher certifications, teachers are not able, if they're secondary certified, they cannot teach fifth grade. So that is some of our limitations. And then once we get to the high school, 
okay, maybe in English, if I have 50 kids, I can put 25 and 25, two sections, but I won't be able to offer any electives. So I would never go below three for everything. Can I say something? I'm sorry, I've been, I know it's weird with our setup out here. It's hard to see everybody. And I'm sorry I'm being overly frustrated tonight, I, I, but I am frustrated because once again, this is the community's building too. And we have so many kids that go without here in our district because there's just not a lot going on here. So for me, having a gym, having a pool is one thing that we shouldn't cut back on. But I ask the board, how many times do we sit here and bang our head and say, if only that back gym would have been done right the first time. How many times have we said that? If only that back gym would have been done and they would have been forward thinking and put full bleachers back there. And all I can help but sit here and think we're doing the same thing with this project as those people did with that project. We're not forward thinking. I mean, and we talk about, I mean, at least PJ does and he's not here, but constantly says we have not gotten any feedback from our students, please take all of our high school students and, and quiz them and say, how many of you would be proud to play your basketball games, your volleyball games down here at our junior high gym the way it is? Because I can't, I would bet my house to say, I can't imagine one kid would be like, let's just go for it. So let's start getting kids input. Let's see what they have to say. Um, actually, I do have some student input. Oh, yes, go ahead, thank you. So, um, and of course, uh, some didn't have an opinion. Uh, we did a, um, a Google Doc for the high school students. Uh, Mrs. Previsch did this. Um, there are comments such as, I think the high school building project is not necessary. Um, I think it's a good idea to have a new build. Ours is old and moldy. Uh, I think, feel like it's healthier environment for students and safer. Some don't have an opinion. Um, some think that the new building attached would be an awful idea. Some of them say consolidation would be the best choice with an addition. Uh, some do mention about having playoff games in a gym. Uh, would easier for the bus drivers to get all the kids at once. Um, it would be better without any damage to it and air conditioning and no mold. Um, I think it would be easier to focus in the summer at least if we are cooled down and overall I think a fresh new start would be a good idea. It says for new students the impact will be positive, that is for new students. For already established students who went to high school where it now it will be a huge adjustment. Um, again, it's kind of all over the place, as you would consider. There were only uh, 30 students that did respond to this. Um, implement student Wi-Fi, proper heating and air conditioning, better security with people coming in and out of the building. Um, it's not a bad idea. I think it's good we're getting a new, a new building. It will be a nicer environment. It would be pretty sad if my children one day went to the same school my 78-year-old grandma went to. <laughs> As a student athlete, I am honestly embarrassed for other schools to come here after going to their schools. I can't focus in the summer with sweat dripping down my face. I can't focus in my classes with the doors ringing and the furnace running outside the school windows. Don't even get me started on the school windows. If an outsider wanted to come and break in, they could literally punch through the windows and it would, it would be broken. I don't feel safe here and I think things need to change. Um, some of them say I don't like the building project because mixing older kids with younger kids could result in bullying more. Uh, so, you know, we have, we did ask for their opinions and I'll have these available um, for the board if they wish to view them. I also asked for some teacher input as well. Sure. And again, these are all over as well. There's uh, 14. Uh, something needs to be done. The majority of the schools in our area have made great improvements to their facilities. This project has been discussed and planned for years. Anyone to state that this was done in some kind of sneaky manner 
um, I, again, I'm just reading this, is a blatant lie. If someone was not aware of it, it's on them, not the school district. Um, the board had the insight to finally make a decision and get things moving, and now they are facing some pushback. Um, I think the board and the district have been extremely upfront. Uh, I watched the board meeting. I heard many public comments that were nothing but self-serving. Again, I don't want to go into all of this. Um, I feel that something must be done as the building, as much as I love it, it's falling down. The students need a safe, presentable school to be proud of. A newer school would also attract more, rep more people to this area. Um, not well versed, I don't feel I have a lot of experience, I don't feel this building project, um, I do feel this building project is a bit rushed. I don't know if adding two additions onto the high school would be sufficient. Something needs to be done. Uh, I think the high school building project is necessary for improving our student education. Building project is much needed for the success of our students. As a teacher, I'm neutral about the building project. I will teach in whatever room I am given. If I'm giving space and materials that enhance my teaching, then all the better for the students. If not, I will continue to teach to the best of my ability with what I have right now. I do, however, think the building project is in the best interest of the students and the taxpayers of the district. I feel the building project will end up saving the taxpayers money in the long run. Um, I do wanna, oh wait, there was some. Um, there was also mention about uh, public comments sending the kids elsewhere, get rid of the school in general. Um, they were a bit confused as to why that would be an option. Um, someone does not support the consolidation. Uh, I believe it's in the best interest of our older students to have their own building. It's part of their identity. I would only support renovating the high school facility. Uh, so again, we had 14 teachers give some input on that and those uh, were from the high school and the students were from the high school as well. Thank you, Dr. Now Pesson. I don't feel so bad because the students and the teachers are all over the page just like we are. <laughs> so now let's figure out how, how to come together because right now it's, it's like this one's not going to budge, that one's not going to budge, and we're not going to get anywhere. We're just not going to get anywhere. Okay, anything else to add with uh, students and staff into the existing building? And I will work on that, by the way, um, just to, to fine tune where the classes fit and to see if it is a possibility with the schedules that we're running. All right. Okay, we're going to hold public comment to the end, but if, if a board member wants, to, do you want to answer that? Um, no. You, you can't. I, I we'll, was just going to say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, if we, we can hold that, we have a couple more things to go through, and then we will get to your questions. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, taxpayer concerns. Are we doing anything to address the taxpayer concerns here? Any comments? I think what our taxpayers are looking for is a compromise. Um, I think from what I'm hearing that they don't want to stop growth in our school district, but I think they're expecting us to spend the tax dollars wisely. Um, if we can fit them into the existing building, um, I think that that would be the compromise that we could offer them. Um, any questions or comments that you have as board members? We've heard all of their concerns. Um, and then um, we heard a lot of uh, 
points given to us last meeting. Maybe you can think about those if there's something you'd like to respond to. Mr. Basil? No, I was just going to say, I, I, I feel that we've taken a lot of the taxpayers' uh, comments into account. I know Jim had mentioned about the solar panels, so we made some calls about potential solar up at the high school. Um, again, I don't think you're going to find anything feasible about s squeezing the high school in here. We've kind of talked about that in the last piece, but again, 20-something classes being held at one point, not counting the administrative staff and the other uh, essential class that they're having up there. There is no feasible way that you're squeezing the entire high school into this building as of right now. Impossible. Uh, can you gain a few spaces? Yes, I'll concede on that. But there is no way you're feasibly squeezing the entire high school into this building. So again, we're not getting by on this project without doing an addition. It's just not happening based on this, 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 this simple math of how many classes are being held at the high school. If you could tell me where you're going to fit 25 classes in this school or 24, not counting the administrative staff, I'd welcome it, but walk around the school and tell me where you see 25 spaces at. It's not happening. So again, not discounting what the taxpayers are saying. We're trying to consider every option, but we're putting a lot of hours into this, and I just don't see feasibly how you're going to get away from doing a, if we're going to go through and do a project that is trying to bring the school district together, you're just not going to get it into one building. So again, then the question becomes, some people have made comments, do we renovate the high school? again? I don't think it makes any sense from a taxpayer standpoint to put 15 million or 16 or 18 million, whatever that number is, say 15 even, into a school district that may have 200 and something students in it. And I, I mean, again, 22 million we can put into the entire school district and that serves every student in the school. Or did we put 15 million into four grades? So again, I don't think that's an option either. So again, it's, it comes down to what does make the most sense. And we know we, we need to balance a budget. So we've factored in the least amount of tax increase we can to hopefully meet what we uh, have a plan for. We've been putting together the savings. We haven't finished it yet. We'll hopefully have some numbers rolled out to the public in the next uh, week on it or a few days. Um, we started to pull together and it's sub substantial savings over time. If we're going to equate, which we keep hearing the numbers in the, from the public about the amount of money we're going to spend on the bonds over the next 25 to 30 years, well, we're going to show the savings over 30 years and hopefully it will at least paint a picture of this isn't a project that's a zero net effect, but it's going to be a project that's better overall and it's not costing what uh, has been, in a sense, uh, put out there from when you add all the payments up. I know typically if somebody asks you what your mortgage is, they don't say, well, let me add up all my payments plus let me take the interest over the next 30 years. They say I have a, a certain amount outstanding right now because that's what you would have to pay back that day if you paid it back. So that's what we're reflecting the bonds at. But we will show the savings in the same thing to make sure we're comparing apples to apples. So we're putting that together, but again, I, I think we've We've been very transparent of what the tax increases were. They've started years before this board because of the planning for this project. There was a hold put on place for COVID, uh, but now we're catching up for that. So uh, again, not trying to deflect or, or discount what um, is being implemented right now by the board. We're taking ownership of it, but again, it's what we need to do to make sure we get this project done. So I, I, again, I, that's the only comments I have. And I, uh, I, I do think we respect you all com for coming here. We appreciate your comments. And I know Jim had mentioned at one of the meetings that we we were listening, but not really taking the feedback. I do feel like we're taking the feedback. I just don't know how many options we really have. So that's the reason I brought the solar up. So that's all I can think of right now. To and I will say, I did, uh, board members, I gave you some information just on number of households in the district. There's 2,840 households. It's on the little orange card that I gave you. And our population is 7,200. And I got this off the census website. So that gives you a number of, uh, a total number of taxpayers that we're talking about in this district. Okay, I have something, a compromise here. Um, April, April is adamant that she wants to do something with the gym. But when we started this project, when we... Okay. Um, when we started this project, April had mentioned waiting and maybe putting up a new gym. What if we don't do, don't do anything to the gym right now? We've got three years that it's going to take to do this project, so you've got the high school gymnasium for at least three years. At the end of the three years, you look at our finances. I'm going to be off the board. It's going to be up to somebody else that you look at our finances 
if we've been able to actually start paying down on what we borrowed already, then you go, okay, it would be feasible for us to look at turning the gym, expanding it out, and doing something with it. Because you're gonna have the high school gym for at least those three years to use, if not further down the road. And you could use that high school gym further down the road until you get the new gym turned and built. I don't mind holding off and waiting to see what we can do with that, that gym up at the high school. And, and honestly, like if we want to put the high school up for bid and see what we get from it, another good point, I would be, that would be great if that would turn out the way that you all had suggested. Um, my concern is, Betty, like say we do save money, that $1.5 million addition in four years from now then costs us how much money? That's what I'm saying, but I am happy to wait because I mean, I'm not gonna vote on a project, I'm 100% being honest with you, if that gym is our only option for the kids. I'm just, I'm just, I'm sorry. This, like if we're doing this one time and we're gonna make our community go through this one time, then we either flip it that way or we wait and see what we can do up at the high school. Because I can't imagine what 1.5 then is gonna cost three or four years down the road. And will we actually have saved the taxpayers any money then just because of inflation? And maybe things will come down and, they, and we will be able to save it. But I mean, I'm willing to look at options, but I wanna have that conversation before we vote on something. So we're back to square one again as to what are we gonna do with the high school gym? I'm, I'm one vote. Just like your one vote and Norma's one vote, I'm one vote. You could bring things up for a vote and everybody will vote the way they want to. I'm just telling you what my opinion is of it. Well, I'm just trying to find some compromise that we can all agree on. I, and I'm saying I understand and I think if we could find another option, that's great. But once again, if we're just gonna put this off, is that my mic giving feedback? That's out there. I just don't know if, um, if then that $1.5 million becomes $2 million three or four years down the road, what does that look like then for taxpayers or just, it's just gonna a larger price than it was initially, that's all. or comments there if not we're going to open it up for public comment yeah I'm not working all the here there can you hear me no. okay we're down to a couple mics here we'll do our best okay um if that's all the, the um, concerns for now at the board are you ready for um, no other questions or comments we'll open it up to public comment and concerns Okay, questions and comments from the public. I have um, a page of signups. Um, and I, I know I'm getting exhausted over this and the rest probably are too. If we could try to keep it within five minutes, that would be great. Um, but I don't want to um, not give someone a chance to speak. So let's try to get through this um, and, and keep it brief if you can. I'd appreciate that. Thank you, Jen. I, I just want to ask um, anyone who's speaking if you could just state what ta municipality you pay your taxes in so that way the board knows who you're representing. Thank you. Um, it's in our policy to state your address. I don't know about the municipality. That's fine. Yeah, I don't I did think feel that that's a little discriminatory per, per, per municipality. All right, let's begin. We have uh, Peggy Ritchie. Are you ready to begin for us? <laughs> okay, Peggy, was she going to speak or? Hey, Peggy oh, wants okay, to come Mr. Later. Westrick then? Okay, um, and he signed up. Go I, ahead. I am Bob Westrick, and I live in Susquehanna Township, and I don't mind telling anybody that. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, as I told you before, I bring a rather unique perspective to this whole thing. Um, 
I haven't taught in the classroom for 15 years, but when I retired from Black Lake Valley, before Dr. Fasonic came there, uh, I was teaching six classes a day, six different preps, because we faced the same problem there, declining enrollment. Fewer and fewer students, so every teacher had to pick up and do more. So I know what we're talking, a little bit of what we're talking about here. But I do have a few things. I, I'm not questioning the quality of the education here. I think that's a separate issue. We're talking about a building project and a tax increase. And I think we should keep it to that. Uh, when it comes to what do the students want, I, I would be a bit afraid to ask the students what they really wanted because students have no idea what the costs are. Uh, give you an example. When I was 16, a lot of my friends were getting muscle cars because that was back in the day of muscle cars. And I really wanted one. You know what I ended up with? A 63 Ford Fairlane because my dad said that's what we can afford. Sometimes you have to go with what you can afford and I think that's where we're coming from as taxpayers. We need to look at what we can afford in this district. And maybe I heard the word compromise. I heard the word adjustments. I think those are all, that, that's where we need to go. We need to make adjustments. We need to compromise. We need to figure out what we can do. What can we do with the money we already have without borrowing more money? Because I'm going to make this prediction, and it's simply my opinion, that if this district borrows any more money, we're going to bankrupt the district and the community. I firmly believe that. We're talking about students, and uh, I have one question. Uh, the Votech students. We have, according to the numbers, I saw 66 students in Votech. Do they go to Votech the whole day, half day? How does that work? Half day. Half day. So we have 33 students that aren't here in the morning? and We have our 10th graders go in the morning. Okay. Our 11th, 12th graders go in the afternoon. So the numbers that we're looking at to put in the building half a day, that some of them aren't there. Well, again, those numbers, the classrooms that I looked at did include okay. Votech Okay, so when kids. we talk about 836 students mm -hmm. total, we really maybe only have 806 here at one time. But we still Something. have certain, we still have the same, we still have okay. classes that we're offering. I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. And I don't think we should cut classes either. And I think we should, we should help our students as much as possible. You mentioned college. But you know what? I went to college and I paid it myself. I didn't ask taxpayers to pay for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Westrick. If you wanna just state your name for us, you can It's honest. Peggy Ritchie and I live in Susquehanna Township. And we take, we, on that street, we pay a lot of tax, a lot. And I, called Cambria Heights School District and I talked to their business person over there and I asked them if they still had a pool and she said no. They did away with their pool because it was too much in maintenance and they're a bigger school district than we are. So I don't know where everybody has the idea that we can afford a pool here. I think it should be done away with simply even on the maintenance and there's not enough students to partake of it. There's, there's not enough populace here to pay what you're planning to do. I think it's crazy, especially with the inflation and the world, <laughs> banks are failing. I don't know what you're thinking, but I wish somebody would get into reality here what we're talking about. We can't afford all this. So you can only do what you can afford. And whatever it is, it is. And it, to me, it doesn't matter what the kids want. It's what they can afford to get. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on our list is Dolly Sasway. I'm Dolly Sasway, Susquehanna Township. I don't know, can you hear me? I don't want, if we talk this way, then you can't hear back here. Uh, a lot of my questions were answered. However, in defense of the third pool, uh, third gymnasium that was put up for a practice gym 
when they were, because they had the high school. And as far as expanding it or anything, that hillside is a swamp back there. And at one time, all the water came in in the offices and that gym was flooded after that hill was cut off. And if you want to expand that gym, I, I wouldn't question that. And I have one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, how many rooms are on that addition out there? I see, well, you took the picture down, but I couldn't guess how many rooms that was. And, and Dolly here is a former school board uh, member also. So she's been um, through here, I don't know how many years, Dolly, how many years were you on the board? I, I don't know, maybe 14 or 16, I don't okay. even know. There, there's a combination of um, rooms larger than regular classrooms, classroom size, and rooms smaller than regular classrooms, and it's 24, 12 per, per floor. If you put a chemistry room up, it's gonna be set up for chemistry, right? Yes. A chemistry lab will be set up for chemistry. A chemistry okay. lecture space will be set up for okay. science lecture. Okay. Do you have to drill out there? My recommendation would be if we, for the classroom, we've already done that drilling. If we, if we did the gym addition, which sounds like they. No, I want to understand. You have to drill for the classroom. Yes. 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 We did. We did we already. Did. We already did. You already that. did? Yes. yes. And the, the result was that the geotechnical engineer is recommending deep foundations, which are caissons and grade beams going down to the bedrock. Uh, and how far is that? It ranges from, according to the report, it ranges from anywhere from nine feet to 23 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. I want you to know, we'll get my dry mouth. When I was coming into the board meetings, all the people were going home and they trusted us. And I feel we should be able to trust you to make a decision and get a renovation here. You know, you're not all gonna agree, but you do it. Thank you, Dolly. Thank you. Okay, next signed up is Elaine Klein. I'm Elaine Klein, I'm from Board Council. Yeah. I just have a couple questions. I was reviewing back at the last couple um, renovation meetings. In October 26th, 2022, at the meeting, there was an announcement of a flyer that was being sent out to all the residents of Northern Cambria School District regarding the renovation project. Everyone that I have spoke to has not seen a flyer. Was there actually a flyer distributed to the residents of Northern Cambria School District? I can address that. Um, we talked about a flyer when I shared with the board the cost of the flyer we decided to try some other ways to share it with everyone. And so we did newspaper and we did on our website. So we so, chose to do it that way. So if people do not have internet service, the elderly people in the area cannot access the internet, they're not gonna see the notification on the website. If you do not receive the newspaper, you're not gonna see the information on the, in the newspaper either. So I think that a um, flyer should have been sent out to all the residents of Northern Cambria School District regarding what your plans were for the addition for this building because they are taxpayers of this district. Okay. <clears throat> then the second thing I have is um, at the school board meeting last Tuesday, Mike Basil made the remark that um, we can't afford this addition. They haven't done a very good job at proving to us how they can afford it. But there was also a comment that was made um, stating that 
the school district has paid off $5.7 million, $5,700,000 in interest in principal in the last 16 years. So that's only $11,400,000 in 30 years. How are you going to be able to pay off an additional $20 million, not including interest, in 30 years when we can only pay $11 million off, in, well, $5,700,000 off in um, 16 years? The numbers just don't match. But what I'm saying is if, if we only can pay off $5.7 in 16 years, how do you plan on paying off? We have $8 million in debt right now. If we borrow another $20 million, that's $28 million, not including interest. How can we afford to pay that amount of money off when we can only afford to pay off $5,700,000 in 16 I years? I believe in that 16 years, though, there was additional renovations that were done. So it wasn't just... Okay. Okay, so in regards to that, um, Mr. Pranish had on the board at the one meeting, in 2006, we owed $8,333,000. That was to pay off past construction borrowing. Since then, they have rolled that bond from 2006 into 2011, 2012, a bank loan in 2016, and another bank loan in 2020. To this date, we still owe, well, I don't have 20 and 21 because that information was here. So when I calculate it up through 2020, we still owe on that bond from 2006, which may have been from five years before that because who knows how many times it was rolled over then. Well, if you look at his reports from his meeting, his report that he had at the meeting that is on the website, um, just look at it and you can see where all the bonds were refinanced from 2006, 2007, and on. And we still owe debt from the 2006 bond. And who knows how far that goes back that we still have not paid for. So that was my concern is if we still owe debt from way back when, how can we feasibly say that we can afford this project and how is it fair for the taxpayers to keep on raising their taxes to afford this? Why can't we step back, like Mr. Shell said at the last meeting, step back for three years, see what's going to transpire. You have three years to use that bond. See what's going to transpire. See where the district is going. 
leave the high school where it's at. Were we evicted from the high school that we have to go out and completely get into code? Because um, to get into code, you can maintain a building, do repairs, and it doesn't have to go into code to do repairs to maintain a building. Sit back and look to see where we're at. Pay off some of this debt and see if we can get some more numbers, some more savings pulled together to put this renovation project in to move forward on it. I just don't feel with the situation that the taxpayers of Northern Cambria School District are in with all the increases that are going on right now with inflation, that this is a very feasible step to take for the taxpayers of the school district. And that's my own public opinion. Right, there are, is it consolidation or renovation? Or is it specified consolidation? Consolidation. Okay, and then another question. Um, Norma also asked um, Jamie Doyle at the last school board meeting for a breakdown of principal and interest that has been paid by the school district. Was that information obtained from Jamie Doyle? Yes, I believe I sent that to mm. board I members. I do not have that. Let me double check. I think I sent it in my... Uh, my question also dealt with the 30 years of principal debt and the fact that we were refinancing how we, how she, what plan she recommended that we use to pay this off. Yeah, I did get that information. No, I, I never saw it, never got the answer possible it's been a crazy week okay and I just but I'll get that information for you right now no she asked for the principal and interest that the school district has paid the last numerous years mm -hmm. um, and then I do have one more thing uh, the financial report that was filed for the school district that was due in October and wasn't filed until March was there any repercussion on the school district for this not filing on time because I actually am a, a secretary treasurer for Bar Township and we have deadlines to file our reports. If not, it jeopardizes our funding from the state. We do not receive our funding to repair our roads. So was there any, Penny, you can't talk about that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Just to let you know, you know, we did this building project idea. Thank you. We approached this idea, I believe it was 2017. Um, and, and we had an architect involved and we were looking at consolidation and we got to a point we kicked the can down the road. Um, and at that point we had, you know, the three of us were on the board for sure and um, at least two other Bar Township folks were on the board at the time. I take responsibility for that, that, you know, we didn't do anything from then till now that maybe we could have done something better but we can't continue to keep kicking the can. Well, everybody's coming against Bar Township. I am a resident, we I am a resident of Bar Township, but I am also a resident of Northern Cambria School District. I understand. I graduated from Northern Cambria. My, my grandchildren go to Northern Cambria. I have nothing against that. My whole thing is I don't think that this, to raise the real estate taxes, where you want to raise them to to be able to afford this $23 million project is feasible for the residents of the school district. I seriously, I mean, I know there's a number of counts out that there's 2,000 some families. Mm -hmm. You gotta look at, maybe somebody needs to do, do a number count on the age group of the family. How many of those people are on elderly on a fixed income? Northern Cambria Borough just raised their taxes three mills. Garbage is going up, sewage is going up, phones going up, everything's going up. My only concern is it's going to cripple a lot of your elderly people in this area that they're not going to be able to afford it. 
and that is my concern. And I hope you look at it as school board directors that you need to look out not just for what we want. Yeah, education is a very important thing, but we also got to look out about the taxpayers and what they can afford also. Because when the taxpayers can't afford it, there's not going to be anybody here to pay for it. And I also did, um, I contacted the three different taxpayers from Northern Cambria School District. And um, the delinquent taxes that went back to the county increased almost 5% from 21 to 2022. Um, the current amount that went back at 2022 was $276,864.61. So who's to say where that number is going to go with everything being inflated with the inflation, the cost of living, of how many more tax dollars are going to go back to the county, and you cannot guarantee when you're going to receive that money from those taxpayers. For the, the delinquent? This is the this is the um, face value, not the delinquent value. The face value for Bar Township, Susquehanna Township, and Northern Cambria Borough is two hundred and seventy-six thousand eight hundred and sixty-four dollars and sixty-one cents. Went back to the county in twenty twenty-two taxes. You're welcome. Thank you, Elaine. Um, next on the list is Carol Lieb. Hello. I asked for a right to know, and what I wanted to see were the original building drawings for both the high school and the middle school. And then I asked to see. I've been hearing that there are numerous um, engineering reports that were done in the past, maybe not by Hank, but by the previous architect that was involved. So far, all I've seen is the old blueprints, which looked like they hadn't been touched in a while, and then a feasibility study from, I think it was VEBH Architects, and one study that was done on the high school by FH Lens. So where are all these engineering studies that I've been hearing about, and how can you make an informed decision when you don't have the studies to back up what you're doing? Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, everything that we've had, uh, everything that I could find, I offered to her. So, um, and I actually sent her an email, I believe, last week. Did you get the email last week of the additional information that I found? Yeah, so anything additional that I come across, I send to her. And that's everything that I have. Are we missing some of the reports that we've earlier paid for? Is, is maybe that the problem? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe you can. Who said that? Hank said that. Hank said, okay. Hank say. What I can do is I can go through my files in the office because I had things turned over to me, and anything that I didn't return back, I will make copies so I have them and I will return them to the school so that they can make them available. But I was under the impression that the copies that I got were actually copies and that there were still copies here, but maybe that's not the case. But everything I have, I will return back so that it can be made public. And then whatever we have, we'll make available.
can we talk about, we have our engineer here today, for this evening. Maybe you can address what was, what was done for this project. <clears throat> yes, the, the approach that we took early on, uh, when we were, we came aboard to work with the school board, um, we toured both facilities, our engineers. Um, we met with the facilities in the department and in the district. And <clears throat> what we came up, what we approached was evaluating existing conditions in the buildings. And we used an approach that <clears throat> we were evaluating existing systems for current life safety conditions in the building. We were evaluating it for age and current operating conditions, what was going on in both buildings. Um, what we put together was a budget to bring both buildings up to current codes, life safety codes, replace equipment that we can no longer get parts for, um, systems that are you can't get parts for, life safety systems <clears throat> in both buildings. And we put those budgets together for the board to make it, to again, evaluate whether or not it made sense to consolidate to one building or renovate two buildings. Also as part of that, <clears throat> we prioritized what those items were. Um, were those, the, the, were the items in the classrooms? Were they items that in the systems of the building, whether it was windows, doors, heating and air conditioning, heating systems, uh, et cetera? Okay, um, and then back to Hank, if we can get a hold of that paperwork, maybe we need some of that, I, I don't know. Um, but um, I'd, I'd actually, I recommend, strongly recommend we at least keep it on file. And thank you. Um, next on our list then is Mark Krimenacher. Did you have a question? I just have one more comment. Okay. And actually, I do want to have another question. At the last meeting, all there was said about the residents of the municipality that were requesting the um, passes. And Mike stated that everybody who spoke to him from the Cambrian School District or Madison or Thoreau, his area was the one having any problems. But I actually spoke to the tax collector of Northern Cambria Thoreau, and there are people with concerns that are coming in to say they're. Okay, thank you. Are you ready, Mara? So thank you all for letting me speak again here tonight. You so can adjust the mic. You, yeah, you're sorry. gonna have to tip can it you hear up. Me now? There you go. Is that thank better? you. Is that better? Okay. Mm -hmm. So as all of you can tell, I'm clearly not for the building project going through currently, but it's not for any detriment to the children. It is, you know, a community project, and I think you know both sides need to be heard. So to go along with those, I feel this needs to be said. Poverty level is defined by the amount of income for family size. If you look at the government health care website, in 2022, a family of five was considered a po in poverty if you were making less than $33,000 a year. According to the World Population Review, in 2022, the average household income in Northern Cambria was $52,000 with a poverty rate of almost 40%. I think the actual number was like 36.99% along those lines. So that means that 40% of the population that you are asking to give you more money for a new building are already in poverty. I've heard it said that the tax increase will be just 100 or so dollars many times now, but this 100 or so dollars could significantly affect at least 40% of the people in your district. $100 to them could be buying food for their family, getting a medication that their life could depend on, buying oil so their house is not cold, or fuel so they can get themselves to work. 
Besides just that, has anyone considered the correlation between financial stress at home and student performance in school? If you look at the, at the data from the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy, it states that economic hardship and financial distress can have devastating effects on the family. In tough economic times, families often struggle to meet their basic needs. These issues can include mental health issues such as stress, anxiety, confidence, and esteem loss, and depression in both adult and child family members. It also goes on to state, especially in children, behavior issues, academic issue, issues, and issues of negative activities with peers can occur. If you say that 100 or so dollars will not cause financial stress, then maybe we should look at all the current situation in the economy, economy in the United States and maybe consider how that will affect parents and students of the school district. In the last couple weeks, four banks have shut down, including the Silicon Valley Bank, which is the second largest bank shut down of all time. Former White House economist Kevin Hassett also states that if you look at the regional Fed indices, they are down 20% in manufacturing, where the current level is zero already. So the point is manufacturing is collapsing in the United States. He goes on to say that when President Biden took office, the GDP was growing at 6.5% and inflation was in the ones. Inflation has taken off because of the massive spending of the government and they are throwing the economy into recession again this year. It is clear that one is about to start right now. The article ends by stating that the U.S. economy faces setbacks amid bank collapses and fears of a looming recession. I think maybe a hundred or so dollars can affect residents of the school district in very different ways and be should consider before the project is pushed through any farther. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mara. Uh, next, we have Loretta Dunn. Hi. Hi. Feel free to adjust that microphone. How's this? That works. <laughs> nice, loud and clear. Okay. I'm actually, I have stuff written down from Beverly Sherry. Uh, she's not able to be here. There was an injury or an illness in her family. So. Bev would like to know if you've ever considered something that has been utilized years ago when the school purchased trailers for computer labs. When they were no longer needed, they sold the trailers and basically had no, got, got for the trailers what they had paid, so they didn't incur any debt over that. I don't know about this, so I'm just, I'm just passing it on. Perhaps the administration could use trailers or some of the classrooms could use the trailers. Other school districts are utilizing the idea of trailers and, and successfully. And at some point, if, if enrollment does decline, you would el eliminate the trailers, move the students or the offices back into the school. Is that something you would even consider? I, I would I never that, consider putting our. Uh, we, uh, well, that's I, again, not for me to ask you guys. No, right I respectfully, now. I, I, I respect the question, but at the same time, okay. I think it would be absolutely crazy to consider putting our administration and people in trailers outside the school district that we have other people visiting this school. With people. <laughs> I would, I would never move them. Because that. they wouldn't want want to do that. I think it would be unsightly for starters, and, oh, I, and again, we have the space. I. I if we <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Just okay. I have a couple observations, and I'm going to be all over the place with what I'm going to say now. Um, for Mr. Vazel, I'd like to say, why would you not consider the full payback of a bond? You cannot just think about the principal, because when you're all done, you're going to pay a lot more than the principal back. Okay, that's just as a banker all my life. You, you have to understand that a lot of us do understand the amortization schedule. And if you look at principal alone, it's not the whole picture. Um, are all of the board members here from the school district? You're all from the school district? Yeah. And you, okay, I, I didn't know that for sure. Nobody moved out? Okay. Uh, let's see. Someone said that it would be a, an insult to, that it's insulting to offer the students and the teachers 
to exist in what's, what you have at the moment. You have to also consider, like I'm, I'm following on Mara, what an insult it could be to these taxpayers and hundreds more who don't come here to have their to have this debt incurred at this time in their lives. You know, I'm, I'm not there yet. I will be. But there are a lot of your taxpayers that are at that point. And they're, they're going to be very insulted that you think, you know, that they can come up with the money, no big deal. You know, you, you guys represent a lot of people and, it, and it's really shame on us I guess for not being around here for the last eight years and the flyers really should have gone out. Mrs. Fasonic, they still need to go out. Okay, okay, did you save a lot of money not sending those flyers out? Thousands isn't much now when you're talking about 20 million. Okay, so the flyers still need to go out because you're not all done with this project. You, you know, it's gone all over the place and you're not done making decisions. So everybody, if they could be better informed with those flyers, I want to get one. I'm done. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Westrick, you had a question. What what was that? I have a couple things that came to mind. Would it be possible to send would it be possible to send that flyer out with the tax notices? Because we mail tax notices to every taxpayer in the district, right? We have everything on the website, that information. We've okay. put information in the book. Speaking of the website. But you can share that information with them as well. Yes, and we do, but we can't. If that's what the board wants me to do, I'll be happy to do that. It's up to the board. Uh, I just want to correct a couple of things. We heard the $8 million. I have a letter here to Mr. Roland Peronish from Jamie Doyle, February 21st, 2023, that says the outstanding principal of the school district is $17,273,000. And according to the website, the local, local input, local effort is going to have to be $24,277,586 to pay off the current debt. Now, yeah, PlanCon is going to pay some of that, nearly $4 million. But that still leaves the locals to pay 24 mil, over $24 million comes from local taxes. That came right off the website. Um, since I'm back up here again, I have one or two more questions. Our enrollment is decreasing, and yet our budget continues to increase. At what point should we expect that to go the other way? With declining enrollment, I would think our budget should eventually decrease. Just a question. And the other thing is, we talk about students, and I think absolutely we should be concerned about students. But those same students, when they graduate, if they choose to live in this district, are going to be saddled with paying that $24 million debt. Is that what we want to do to them? Thank you. Uh, I do have um, the, I found the email from Jamie Doyle. So for the last 15 years, according to Jamie Doyle, this was on March 24th, from 2008 to 2022, the district repa repaid approximately $6,107,000 of principal in the last 15 years. Uh, from 2023 to 2032, 
the district is currently estimated to receive $4,263,824 in plan con reimbursement. This is already factored into the plan of finance. Uh, if we shorten the step two transaction to 20 years, reduces the arbitrage yield, the borrowing rate, by 0.17%, but increases the annual debt service by $150,000, which would be three mils of taxes. And I will send that to you, board members. Thank you, I'd appreciate having that. I just wanted to mention, uh, there's been several discussions about possibly setting some people, oh, Mr. Rocco had actually brought that up, consolidation. It, it, that is not, or, or a certain group of people leaving the district, it, it is not an easy process. That's a, a vote by our board, it's a vote, vote by their board, it's the, the Department of Education that has to get involved. It is, it is not an easy process. Um, but people keep mentioning, well, we'll just send Susquehanna to Cambria Heights. Cambria Heights is, is at 67 meals for their school taxes. No, they won't be. They'll be 64. Yeah, that now. 64. <laughs> but so, what are your reasoning then? Just ship us off to Cambria Heights. It's not you're not saving any money if we move Susquehanna Township into Cambria Heights School District. Okay, well, that's a whole different story. So we're getting off topic. So I'll just stop right there. I, I also wanted to mention. Everybody keeps talking about losing their homes and how much money we're causing on the taxpayers. I get it. I, I, these decisions have not come lately, I don't think, to any of us. I think where it factors in is, is what's reasonable. So just for me, I, I think I paid $125,000 for my house 17 years ago. My assessed property value, though, is about like 21000 So my taxes are going to increase $169 after all this is over. So in 30 years, it'll be an increase after this is over. Hold on, please don't interrupt me. In 30 years, that'll be an increased payment on me for a little over $5,000. So if I take that and divide it by weeks, that's $3.20 a week over 30 years that I have to save. If it's $100, that's $1.85. I mean, I know we're asking a lot of people. I get it. I'm not taking that lightly. But where do at some point there has to be some sort of reasonable discussion about what is a reasonable tax hike? Okay, that's all. I wanted to address the um, question about our um, budget. Um, each year. The, the amount that we have to pay that we don't have a choice on, there are a lot of things that go into play. Teachers, retirement, we've agreed to that. They deserve it, they've earned it. Um, special education students, the cost to, to educate a special education student is somewhat larger than a regular student and as we've seen an increase in our special education each year so that is part of the reason why the budget has had to to increase how do we how do we get it to it where it's at a standstill i don't know that other than tightening our budget but that's that's speaking to what you're asking as far as why are we increasing our budgets that's part of the reason why Okay, and then um, we have Mark Klein on the list, and then I added Ms. Sirocco to the very tail end. I'm sure you have some comments at the, at the end. All right, I did you that favor and put you on the list. Mark Klein, Bar Township, 310 Lee Road, Carrolltown. Phone, cell phone, 814-244-7889. If you want to email me, kleinstreeform-mk at hotmail.com. Okay, first off, who is Jamie Doyle? And she does not work for the township, correct? Or for the school district, correct? Okay, so who is she? She does not work for um, our school district. She works for a company called PFM that we've used for years to, um, she monitors our spending with the bonds. Um, when we have financial questions, she's someone who we could trust to look over our situation. 
Um, <coughs> in the past, she's given us advice, um, and then she spoke here just the other week at a meeting. Okay, so when we redo a bond and there's a $200,000 fee, is that some of her fees or her company's fees or so on? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure a certain percentage of that does is a So every favor, time we yes. do redo a bond, it's probably to her favor. I'm certain. Okay. Uh, Bart Township was brought up in 2016. They're on the board. I believe if you look at the minutes, uh, they did look at this in 2016. And I can't quote her exact words, but her words when they looked at this before was, if you can't, if you don't think you can do it, don't do it. So that's why it was never done. <clears throat> that's why it was never done. Um, the other thing, we talked about the pool tonight. When was the last, what was the schedule of the pool open to public prior to last month? When was the pool open to the public last? We had our swim team using the pool. The pool was not open then. So last Thursday was our first. Prior to swim. that, when was it open for the public? In the fall, um, I think we had some sessions in the fall. But it's and not like it's used every night or everything for the public. No, we do okay. not have it open every night. Okay. Okay, uh, you're the engineer and you walked, what's your engineering firm? Pyramid. Okay, you said you walked through all the schools. Do you have the study done and all that? We did a uh, financial, yeah, we did do a. a There's an engineering study that has your company's name on it that I can get. Hank has that, that information. But it's your firm's engineering firm's company that did it? Yeah. Okay, and we can, and we can get that, correct? Yeah, Hank has it. Okay. Um, okay, um, over here. Earlier you said like it was $13 million for renovation and $10 million for the addition. Is that correct? You, you just rattled 13 million and 10. That's 23 million. <coughs> That's not soft cost. Soft cost will take you up to 30 million. Uh, and you know, this guy here, Hank, kudos to you. You know, I look and see why they pay you $750,000 already. Every time you go to a meeting, you have to redraw plans. I mean, it just, it's just nuts. Uh, and, you know, Norma mentioned a couple times, we can do it for $20 million, that's it. And tonight they already said it's over that. It's, it's not going to be done. They mentioned about Cambria Heights School District. We're, we'll, be, we're, we'll be up around the 65 mark. Um, was there any talk about groundbreaking at any time? At any time during the school board, at any time on, on these work sessions, was there any talk at all on groundbreaking at all? Do you mean yeah. breaking? Yeah, did anybody say, oh, we're we going to just break the shell and that. have a little syrup? We, I just want to know if it was ever mentioned. We yes, have had no? a, yes, we've had a schedule from Hank, but that schedule has changed several times. Okay, is there a schedule now for point. breaking ground? Yes. And what is it? The schedule now for breaking ground, October if 23. October 23. Okay. okay, they mentioned about the drilling. Uh, kind of looks like we're working backwards on there. It, it, it's so much, it's so easy to criticize once something's done. I'll just let it go at that. Um, back, oh, let me look here. I only had one little page when I started. If you'd have had me start first, I'd have been out of here. Um, Let's see. Back back in September, October, when I first got involved with some of this, you, you there was a sheet. It said option one, option two, option three. O option one was to renovate the high school at four hundred thousand, and then renovate the elementary at eight, nine, ten million, whatever. Um, right now, that's the money we have. Um, you're looking at a th at least a three-year pro. It was a 44-month plan. I, I think we can all agree. You know, it, it's going to be on 44 months till this is over. Um, er everybody's talking about the 800 kids here. Our state, the state has the student enrollment in 2030 at 570 kids. 
with the money you have now, without borrowing any more, that option one to the school board looks the most feasible. It keeps your precious gym. We have the space. You can use the track. $400,000 in the high school. Get it renovated to last. You're only, you're only looking at it to last three more years and beyond. That's all you're looking at because we're going to be using it till 2026 at least. Put $400,000 in the high school. Get it done that it lasts seven years. Come down here. Renovate this school with the mindset that they're going to consolidate in seven years. At the end of seven years, if that school is just totally falling down then, borrow your $10 million, All you're going to have to do is put your gym on down here, and it'll be done. But that'll give you a seven-year span to actually see where your enrollment is. The state says 570. Okay, what happens if it's 670? What happens if it's 470? You know, that gives you some leeway. It's not going to cost taxpayers anymore, and you can still get it done. Um, Outside of that, as far as maintenance, everybody says the school's falling down ever since October. I didn't stay to the end of all the meetings, but when they have maintenance, uh, the only thing I ever heard of was mowers for the grass. I never heard of this pipe's leaking. We have to fix this. This window's leaking. Uh, I don't think that school's so bad. Um, there's other people. Maybe Mr. Rocco can address it. I don't know. I haven't been there. I graduated at 77 from the school. And that, that's the best I can say. Um, right now, though, I think with the $10 million you borrowed, uh, if you look, look at your numbers, that's the best option you have right now. Uh, and if you're going to say that that $10 million was for a new building, pay the penalty. Give it back. Make your first loss your only loss. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Um, and then lastly, we have Mr. Rocco. I can give you people credit. I only have to come to these now and then, and I don't have to stay the whole time, and I'm still ready to beat my head off the wall when I leave. So you got to be here all the time. I give you credit. I mean, this is grueling. But I have a couple questions. Um, well, let me get to my – no matter what we decide, since the beginning, I've always said I, I have one that I think is a priority for this district, for the town, for the kids in the district, and that was the preservation of the, of the high school gym. So these are numbers that Roland gave us a few months back. The total expense for the high school, that's the whole high school, per year, total expense for the high school per year, is 107, I'm, round, I'm using round numbers, $175,000. Total expense for maintaining the high school for a year. So now we're just trying to maintain the gym, $100,000, okay? Let's say it's more than that. Uh, because of inflation, it's gonna be more than 100, it's more than 100,000. Again, I'm only maintaining half the high school, so it's $100,000 to maintain the gym. Do you know how many years, even with inflation, even with larger maintenance costs, $100,000 a year, even if it goes up, you're talking about, you know, a million dollars every 10 years to maintain the gym. And even if it goes beyond that, it's still, what, 1.2 million? That's every 10 years, which means from now until um, when those bonds are due in 30 years, According to these numbers, which of course will go up, still in 30 years, maintaining the gym is between a three and five million dollar number. That's with your numbers, 175,000 for the whole high school. So maintaining the gym for 30 years, it's not, it was mentioned at one meeting, 400,000 a year. No, according to your own numbers, maintaining the gym side of the high school, gym, auditorium, et cetera, should be between 100 and 150,000, which means you can keep that thing for 30 years and you're paying less money than a few million dollars, three, four, five million dollars. Nothing like the numbers I keep hearing. Um, I wanted to ask Hank, again, a couple months back, uh, you came and you gave us a bottom line number on the, what you thought the school was gonna cost, and it was 
23 million, give or take. So my question is, was that before the core drillings came in that would require the whole foundation, or did that include that, or how, what was the timeline there? Any number I had given before last month would have been before the core drillings okay. came so in. So what do you estimate that w would add to the cost? Just ballpark. It, it would add a million dollars counting the, the front classroom addition and a rear gym addition, but they've already decided not to do a right. rear so gym addition. Right, so just the front, just the so front. So it, added, it adds about $700,000 okay. to, right. to the front classroom addition. All right. So again, the price has now gone up again. So now we're probably in the $24 million range. And I still think that's being very, but, very conservative. But they just took the, the, the gym addition off, so it went down the cost of that gym addition. Right, it was twenty-three million. That was that was that with the gym edition. That was with the oh, gym edition. Oh, okay. Edition. So either way, we're whoops, we're in the twenty-three plus million dollar range, assuming that the gym edition. But we're, what about the front gym edition? Isn't that going to be money too? That's not that's not on the table right now. Okay, so we're twenty-three million without any gym additions, but with the new foundation we have to put in, okay? So if we decided to do the gym addition, now we're back to $24, $25 million again, okay? Now, everybody knows that's been here that, and I know some of you are going to roll your eyes, that I'm, as some of those suggestions were, I've always been in favor of keeping the high school, not because I have any sentimental attachment to the high school, but because it's the cheapest option as Mike said it I'm assuming that what this guy was talking about was that when he did that study that was the number that Daniel Hoover read at that meeting back in October about 14 million to do the high school and then the middle school was 20 some million that was when we were going to do two separate projects I'm assuming that his study is where that 14 million came from because that was the original that's when we were trying to get the original numbers. So let's say the high school can be done for 14, 15, 16. I'll even give you $17 million. And Mike says that's not a big difference. But the difference between 16 million and 24 million is 33%. That's a significant difference. If you did the high school and it only cost you 16 million, you could get by with one bond. You could pay that bond off in 20 years. And you wouldn't have to worry about the extra addition, uh, the, the extra financing. Which that was your goal, 20 years. So you could pay a 10, year, a $10 million bond off in 20 years, save the, the financing. You're only going to spend 16 or 17 million, so you're saving six, seven million on the building. Now you're saving building and you're saving financing, and you don't have to worry about what the gym's going to cost because you already have one. It'll already be at the high school. And here's the other thing. If we're renovating, I... For years, I don't know why this school has not hired a grant writer. Since Maryland left, that was years ago, we haven't had a grant writer. I just saw in uh, Governor Shapiro's new budget has $100 million for asbestos removal. If you had a grant writer, maybe you could get the entire floor, which is asbestos of the high school, done for nothing. Okay? Now your cost has gone down again. So I think you need to look at funding this thing in other ways other than just borrowing the money and that my number one thing would be hire a grant writer I don't care what you have to pay him that's free money okay you a grant writer might cost you 50 or 60 thousand one grant might get you one or two million dollars you gotta find a grant writer I still think no matter how you slice it if you can do the high school for 16 or 17 million done deal you're going to save 33 percent and you can do it with one bond, which means you're saving financing. I know people want to consolidate. I perfectly get it. And I said over and over, I understand why you want to do it. And I'd be all in favor of it if we were saving a lot of money doing it. And saving a lot of money does not mean saving a lot of money in the year 2050. Okay? Because who the heck knows what the world's going to be like then? It's about saving the money in the next 10 years when the money's actually worth more. That's when the, the savings is important. So, uh, let me make sure I covered everything I wanted to say here. Okay, six million, twenty-three million. 
Oh, I did have one question for April because, again, some months ago, you and Mike, I forget who the other person was, were absolutely, oh, I think it was Danielle, that you thought keeping the third gym was very important for the kids of the district. And now we seem to have backed away from that, and I don't understand if it is that important, and I think it is, why we would ever back away from that. Oh, yeah, I'm mad. you missed my, I'm mad about the gym. <laughs> That's like if anybody learned anything here. Uh, yeah, I, the only thing I was conceding on, Mr. Rocco, I wanted to flip that gym. I wanted to talk about doing the, the, the multi-purpose room, but when everybody wants to talk about compromise, well, where, I, where do you want me to compromise? I, I understand. I understand. We're kind of in a tough spot here. We either spend the twenty-three million and keep the gym, which now we're up to twenty-six right. million. Okay. Which but that, but I, like I, you know, I think if you're going to spend twenty-three, you go ahead and spend the twenty-six, which I think is too much, or you do the high school. But that's so, what I was saying. Like, yeah. We voted down not to do the core sample drilling out front, so we the turning of the gym is off the table. So I was upset. I'm saying that middle school gym should never be our flagship gym for these right. kids which Correct. is what we have really come so to so if we're not right going now. to have that as our right. gym and so miss mrs krug like she said that maybe we can look at what we can do with the high school because that's our only option right now because uh, i and, and again that'll be that, my only thing i vote on to keep the high school gym now or build a brand new one because i also right. said i wanted that and, and all i can say is again if if there's anything i can do to if we did manage to keep that to get some kind of whether it's the town library in the in to use that in the cafeteria, which that. might get you, I don't know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year in rent. I don't know. We but did talk about that. We said about um, offering, seeing what people will pay for. Well, to, if they wanted to purchase the building, but if not, we have looked at ways. We've talked about people coming in and running. That has been a conversation that everybody on the board pretty much has agreed upon. We've had conversations with Adelphi. Um, I know that Norma had mentioned University right. Police. There's been other mention of the library moving in there. The whole board, I feel like, is kind of on board with looking at some alternatives with that high school. Right. Okay. Now, well, that makes me feel a little better yeah. because, again, we had a track meet. We had no bathrooms at the track meet. So if the high school wasn't there, I don't even know how that would have even functioned. I mean, I, I just don't know how anything up there can work without the high school, without the gym there. I just don't see it. So, I mean, I, I would not want to be in your position. This is a horrible decision to have to make. I appreciate what you guys were saying about the five kids in a physics class, or six, is enough for me to have a physics class, okay? I'm sorry, it's a high, high, high level class. Eight kids in a calc class is enough for me to have a calc class. And when you're talking about classes of that level, that's what you have to do, so I appreciate you saying that. but. Again, please consider the low cost option here is not necessarily the bad one, even though we'll end up with two buildings. Again, rolling zone numbers. Maintaining the high school is, according to this, $175,000. Let's round it off to $200,000 a year. That's still over 20 years, does not amount to what we're going to pay in financing for this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rocco. I have one other um, comment and question, I guess. Um, it was brought to our attention. It was brought to our attention that, that some people were thinking there was misinformation being thrown out there um, on purpose. I don't think there has been. I think it's information by accident thrown out there. And and I want to ask Hank, Hank, what do we plan on keeping if we if we rent it or if we consolidate down here and we move everybody down? What are our plans for what is moving from the high school down and what will we be doing brand new? Are you talking about furniture and equipment? I'm talking furniture, equipment, desks, everything. So my understanding, the, the, the board had wanted to move all usable furniture that is up there down to here. And 
when we were looking at, say, shop equipment and that type of thing, we were looking at moving anything that would be useful down here from the high school. It, all along the board has, the marching orders the board has given their design team is they wanted this project to be as financially sound as possible and, and, and to make sure that, that we're not spending or de over designing or putting more, spending money on something that didn't need to be spent. So the short answer is everything that needs to be moved from the high school was planned on being moved to the high school. The things that are new equipment would be built-in stuff, like they're, you're not looking at moving your old science lab tables from the high school down to the new science labs in this building because they're 30 plus years old up there and with the plumbing and electric and everything that's included with those, it's more cost effective to, to include new modern equipment for your built-in stuff down here. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, we're talking a lot about um, like cost savings by consolidating, but we've never been given a presentation of the cost savings by coming together. Could I ask maybe uh, Mr. Vazel, um, Dr. Frasonic, to put that together and present it to us um, where all the savings will be with combining the building with consolidation so we can look at figures and see what we're able to afford, what we're able to save um, just to put it in black and white on paper, whatever we need to do. I know you've been working on some of that, um, but it would be, it's time for us to see it, that we can see what we have as a cost savings as compared to consolidating versus keeping the two buildings as Mr. Rocco suggested or partial keeping of the two buildings. We need to look at all those numbers and the figures and I know they're out there, um, but if you have, I don't know how far along you are working with that. Uh, I know you've had some meetings. Okay, I was going to say, if you could present even what you can gather by then, just to give us uh, direction with those numbers yeah, and the costs. And okay, because we're going to need to see that. Um, we, we keep talking about a savings that we're going to gain by consolidating, but you know, ideally we, we don't yet have those, those figures. And I know that it takes time to put all that together, but uh, as you've been working on that, I'm hoping you can share that with yeah. us. Well, again, Roland presented savings that we're gonna make the project mm -hmm. affordable. I just don't think it shows an open span of how we're looking at the lot, but again, we're looking at a lot of savings. Just they were very right. conservative savings. Very so we're looking more closely at exact numbers. Yeah, and what I'm saying too is by eliminating so much at the high school and bringing it here, where is our savings in doing that? We need to see that. Okay, um, any other questions you have? Um, board members, questions or comments? Um, audience, thank you all for coming. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the comments, the concerns. Um, we're doing our best here, is all I can say, um, with, with a very difficult situation. So hopefully we'll keep at it and we'll make some good decisions in our future. Our, our next board meeting is April 4th, Tuesday, April 4th, which is a committee of the whole meeting. And then following that is the third Tuesday of that month would be the vote meeting and then the last Wednesday of April, and I don't have that date in front of me, that would be the, uh, the next buildings and grounds meeting would be April 26th, Wednesday. And I'll be gathering some more materials in the meantime, a couple things I asked for during the meeting, hopefully I'll get um, to further work with that. Hank, if you have any questions or want me to contact me or board members or Betty who is representing buildings and grounds can be helpful as well. And you know what, um, for any of you out there who may have questions, that we might be able to get answered prior to a meeting. If you want to email me, um, I'll be glad to point those, direct, those questions in whosoever direction that can answer them. I know 
the board members asked hang some questions um, before the meeting it it took it off the table here that we got answers that we needed so if anybody wants to email me feel free um, I have an email address through the through the school district okay I see one question up there go ahead All right, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hank, anything that you have for closing? Um, all right, I guess we're good to go. Our workshop's been adjourned, thank you.